again, that thing actually really sounds wicked. Uh, the microphone doesn't pick up that high pitched whine and it's so loud that I have to wear earplugs anytime I'm running it. So this all started when, as I was looking back at my video stats and I saw my 3D printed screw compressor was my second most watched video, which is crazy because in my mind, the project was a complete failure. Coincidentally, JLC 3DP reached out to me about their 3D printing service and some of the cool 3D printing technologies they were using and my gears started turning. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to revisit this and see if I could actually get some sort of result with a 3D printed screw compressor. I covered a lot about screw compressors in my previous videos, but I think it's worth revisiting some of the key concepts and honestly understand a lot more now than I did back then. Previously, a lot of people were confused about the differences between a twin screw compressor like this and a root style compressor. In a root style compressor, air enters perpendicular to the rotors, usually right in the middle of the rotors, and the inlet and the exhaust ports are gonna be directly across from each other. Almost all of the time, the rotors are symmetric and have the same number of lobes. And a root style blower might have a slight twist angle to the rotors, maybe 10 to 15 degrees, which might confuse some people. That's only there to actually reduce the pulsation of the air making the compressor quieter. Now, there's some cool math behind root style compressors as well, and I may build one in the future, but a twin screw compressor is very different in how it operates. It actually takes the air in at one end of the rotors and compresses it along the length of the screw profile. Because of this, you're going to see twist angles in excess of 300 degrees over the length of the rotor, and this ends up being a much more efficient way to compress air and allows for a higher pressure ratio than a root style blower. The rotors are actually asymmetric, meaning you have two different shapes for the male and the female rotors. And then the male rotor is referred to as the main rotor and the female rotor is usually referred to as the gate rotor. Now within reason, the more lobes a compressor has, the higher the compressor's pressure ratio, efficiency, and flow rate. Also importantly for a 3D printed compressor like this, a high number of lobes tends to improve sealing a little bit. The other cool thing about twin screw compressors is that the rotors actually form a pair of cycloidal gears. So even though the main rotor is larger in diameter, it has less lobes than the gate rotor, so it will actually spin faster. And since there are five lobes on the main and six on the gate, this results in a gear ratio of five to six. Now, before I move on, I just have two more items. Screw compressors can either be dry or oil injected. Oil injected screw compressors seal much better, but obviously the oil can contaminate the air while it's being compressed. So it's not ideal for all situations. And lastly, in larger screw compressors, or as I've done in this compressor, I'm using something called timing gears. This just actually allows me to keep the rotors from touching each other and use those two timing gears to set the spacing between the rotors and keep them so that they are never touching. Uh, this is used a lot in large screw compressors because the rotors are so expensive to machine that you don't want them to actually come in contact with each other and wear out. The most common question I got from my last videos on screw compressors was how do I generate my own rotor profiles? And the short answer is that as a layman, you don't really design your own rotor profiles, especially since most of the methods for generating the rotors are patented or proprietary. Historically, early compressor rotors were generated with a lot of complex mathematics using epicycloidal and hypocycloidal rack tooling profiles. Then they machined the rotors and iteratively made tweaks to the designs through physical testing. Starting in about the 1980s, 1990s, computers became powerful enough to actually create computer simulations that allowed them to iterate and design new rotor profiles with even more accuracy and better sealing characteristics. So today, if you want to build screw compressors, you're likely going to purchase an existing patented design or hire a firm with expertise and some expensive proprietary software along with some PhDs to go along with that. The specialized software is going to actually create a male rotor profile based on a number of factors. Using some parametric equations, it will generate a series of points along the profile of the main rotor. Then the software using a variety of different mathematical methods 
like the envelope method or a pixel method will actually cut out the shape of the main rotor profile from the gate rotor as it is rotated around the gate rotor profile. And this results in another list of coordinates that define the gate profile. In my previous compressor, I used a home-built software program to generate a series of points based on a non-patented Stasic N-Profile rotor. And I'm pretty sure I got it all wrong, which is why it never really meshed properly. This time around, I was given some definition files for several hyper-profile type screw compressor rotors. I selected a profile amongst those and I brought those coordinates into Excel. I thinned out the coordinates because I don't need hundreds of points to define my rotor profiles because of the uh, accuracy of 3D printing. Then I wrote a Python script to import those into Fusion 360 and I drew a spline along those points. This is exactly the same process by which you might import an airfoil profile into Fusion 360 and it's a very common way of defining hard to define shapes in CAD software. Then once I had the profile, it was a simple process of sweeping that profile along an axis to create the rotor itself. Now, because I didn't know how well this compressor was going to perform, I designed the most bare bones compressor housing possible. The air is brought in directly axially at one end and exhausted axially at the other end. Obviously, this isn't how you would package a usable industrial compressor, but most of the twin screw compressors that I've seen, they actually intake an exhaust perpendicular to the rotors, like my previous screw compressor, but that requires more design and actually is a bit less efficient in some ways. The housing doesn't have any seals other than what comes on the actual 608 bearings themselves. If I generate enough pressure that I notice leaking, I'll try to add seals later. Uh, the timing gears are completely exposed and super dangerous, so I'm really excited about that. Now once I had the design done, it was time to actually have it printed by JLC 3DP. The process is very easy. You just upload your models to their website. You can pick from all kinds of 3D printing technologies like FDM, SLA, SLS, MJF, and SLM, uh, like 3D printed metals. Initially, I was planning on using the MGF nylon process, but uh, JLC 3DP reached out to me and they had just introduced a new high temperature resin for SLA, which is really perfect for this application. And in about 10 days, I actually had the parts on hand and they look absolutely beautiful and the accuracy is incredible and the surface finish is so much better than anything you can get with FDM 3D prints. JLC 3DP is obviously using some industrial quality 3D printers and the parts are extremely square and round, uh, which is far beyond what my 3D printer can achieve. If you need anything 3D printed, I highly recommend checking out JLC 3DP and I'll have a link below to their website. I've also included a link to the 3D models for this compressor and I highly recommend having JLC 3DP at least print you out a set of these rotors. They're super fun to play with and everyone who handles them is mesmerized by them. I do not recommend this as anything except a desktop model for anyone out there. This is obviously super dangerous and this is not something that is going to work right out of the box, right off the printer. The clearances on the screw compressor need to be less than 0.2 millimeters basically everywhere to have any chance of this compressor working at this size. Everything on this compressor is hand fit. I had to print numerous copies of the parts with slightly different dimensions until I actually matched the CAD design. And that's important. You can't just scale the parts in your slicer. It will throw off the dimensions of the other holes and the features. Unfortunately, I found two issues with the SLA 3D printed rotors. First, I was used to FDM 3D printing, which typically tends to slightly oversize parts. The SLA parts tend to shrink ever so slightly, about 0.1 millimeters. So I found that the rotors were too small in diameter. But I also had another fatal design flaw in my rotors. That's because I actually had the rotors twist angles backwards. So the compressor would actually have to run backwards to create any pressure. And these profiles aren't designed to run backwards in any kind of efficient manner. So I just printed the new rotors on my FDM 3D printer using 
very low layer heights and extremely slow speeds to try to make them as accurate as possible. I printed about 10 versions of the rotors. It took about 200 hours of printing until they matched the CAD design exactly. These rotors are a really weird shape with a lot of surface area. The male rotor tends to shrink a bit as they cool and the female rotor tends to be a bit larger in diameter. So it took me a long time to get a set of perfect rotors that match the CAD dimensions. So the test setup is pretty straightforward. Everything is mismounted to a piece of plywood here. I have a 2000 watt or so brushless motor driving everything. The motor's not big enough to drive it for a prolonged period of time, but it's more than enough for testing. I'm using the ESC and electronics package from the Streamliner to drive the motor because it has an RC transmitter attached and I don't want to be anywhere near this thing when it's running at top speed. I haven't touched on this yet, but the mail rotor tip speeds need to be around 100 meters per second to build any significant kind of pressure. That's around 220 miles per hour or 360 kmph. Given the size of the rotors, that actually equates to about 38,000 RPM and we're just not gonna spin it that fast. The first test will be on a 3S LiPo, which will give us around 15,000 RPM. And then if the compressor hasn't exploded at that point, I'll go ahead and hook up a 6S LiPo and we can try for around 30,000 RPM. And trust me, I'm gonna be very far away from the potential shrapnel that this thing's gonna throw off. I've attached a zero to 15 PSI pressure gauge here on the end so we can measure the results. It's not an ideal setup uh, to have the compressor just deadheaded into the pressure gauge. It really should have a tank that would act as a buffer, but we're still at the proof of concept stage at this point. So wow, it's extremely noisy, but at 15,000 RPM, we're making one PSI of pressure. Um, it's kind of sad, but I'm also stoked because this is actually a lot better than my uh, centrifugal turbo compressor that I made. Uh, remember, there's no seals on the shafts at this point either, and I can feel some of the air leaking out. Uh, injecting some oil didn't really change the pressure output, and this is not surprising. These compressors actually inject a significant amount of oil when they're in use and without an oil tank that I can just push that much fluid through without actually hydro locking the whole compressor, I can't use enough oil to actually probably get any significant amount of sealing. At 15,000 RPM, I did manage to melt the PLA motor coupler. So I have gone ahead and printed a new one from nylon and I think it's all set to go for a full send on this thing at 6S. <laughs> they are seized. Okay, so what happened here is this bearing let go. Obviously, it melted everything around it. Then the timing gears let go. And when the timing gears let go, we have a thrust problem, which I'll talk about probably a little bit here. Now the main rotor is absolutely fused to the housing and to the intake. I don't know if you can see it there. It's absolutely melted. Okay, so that was just comical. The compressor is unbearably loud at this, even with earplugs. It's hard to say if we achieved max speed. Ultimately, the timing gears were being ground to a fine dust. One of the bearings actually let go and started smoking, which melted the intake end and the main rotor, and eventually the compressor just seized. This was not an overwhelming success by any means, but it's the best performing 3D printed compressor I've made so far. With regards to the bearing failure, my last compressor actually had double 608 bearings on one end to try to handle some of the thrust loads caused by the 
twisted profile of the compressor rotors and the full size screw compressors actually would use an angular contact bearing or a thrust bearing. A lot of them actually have an oil fed journal bearing style thrust bearing. Also uh, screw compressors use a helical gear for their timing gears which is typically cut on an angle uh, that opposes the slant of the rotor itself which helps to counteract some of those thrust loads in the rotors. Unfortunately, I forgot to redesign my timing gears when I changed the twist direction of the rotors. So I was actually adding even more thrust load to the bearings. All of this to say, I don't think a 3D printed screw compressor is really plausible for any kind of practical applications. Everything would really have to be kind of high temp nylon. Parts are obviously melting way too easily, even out of PETG. The compressor has to be much larger with a giant motor. I think probably 120 to 150 millimeter minimum diameter main rotor should be enough to allow for the type of tolerances you can get with a FDM 3D printer or even an SLA 3D printer. Possibly some Teflon seals might help as well. I don't know how long those would actually last. But most importantly, a larger rotor means much lower RPMs for the same tip speeds. 38,000 plus RPM is just not sustainable with a 3D printed plastic part. We also really need a tank and oil injection to help the screws thoroughly seal and to cool all of the housing and the air and the plastic that we have in it. With all that, it's honestly probably easier and cheaper just to buy an old screw compressor and refurbish it. So. For me, that really wraps it up on this compressor. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey. Uh, maybe in a few years, I'll get the itch and try to revisit this again in a giant format. But for now, I'm happy to have made something that at least sounds really cool.